Hey, this is Gladius and welcome to my complete Sparkle guide. If you think Sparkle is toxic AF, I would agree with you. And if you think you can fix her, I'm right there with you. What the hell? Mwah. Sparkle is a Quantum Harmony character that specializes in supporting Hyper Garys as opposed to Ranmei who mainly buffs the whole team. Sparkle covers all the quintessential buffs in Honkai Star Rail. You have crit damage, damage increase, attack percent, and action events. She even generates skill points, but not as much as you might think, which I'll explain. Sparkle can be built in two different ways, depending on who she's supporting. In this video, we'll go over all the details so you know how to play and build her. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Sparkle's basic attack isn't very special, other than getting 10 extra energy from an ascension trace. With a well speed tuned team that she fits in, you'll be looking to use her skill every single turn, at which point basic attacks are pretty useless, it's a result of poor skill point management. Sparkle's skill is the biggest part of her kit, she buffs the crit damage of one ally by 45% plus 24% of her own crit damage for one turn. Unlike other one turn buffs, with the ascension trace unlocked, this buff actually lasts until the beginning of your ally's next turn, which synergizes with follow up attacks that do occur outside of their turn. The other big factor of the skill is that it also advances one ally's action by 50%. This 50% advancement, when utilized correctly, is a huge part when it comes to buffing hypercarry DPSs. Just like Bronya teams, speed tuning will be very important to get the most out of this ability. Sparkle's buffs doesn't stop there. Her talent is a stackable buff that can offer up to 18% damage increase for the whole team, and all you have to do is spend skill points to keep it up. But that is not difficult at all, as you can, and always want to, spend skill points anyway. The talent also increases the team's max skill point by 2. This is a quality of life feature to prevent overcapping skill points, especially she gets from the ultimate. Sparkle's ultimate is a 110 cost ability that increases Sparkle's talent buff to 48% damage increase for 2 turns. At the same time, she recovers 4 skill points for the team. I know 4 skill points seem like a lot, but Sparkle also spends a lot of skill points with her skill. We're building Sparkle for a 3 turn ultimate rotation, she'll be net positive of just one skill point. Not as much skill points as pure SP generators like Pella, Locha, or Hanya, but way less restrictive compared to Bronya. Lastly, her final ascension trace buffs the team's attack by 15%, and another buff to quantum allies attack by up to 30% when you have three quantum units on the team. It's obviously a significant boost to mono quantum teams, but I wouldn't go as far as to say you must play Mono Quantum for Sparkle to be good. When it comes to supporting hyper carry teams, Sparkle is up there and competitive with Branya, who is traditionally the best at this role. I wouldn't go too deep with the comparison, but Branya can't comfortably support skill point heavy carries, but Sparkle will be able to. The reason why Sparkle and Branya are so ahead of other damage boosters is that they significantly increase the action value of one DPS. For visual comparison, this shows Sparkle's buff potential and how it's allocated. It's important that you have a strategy in mind and tune the speed of Sparkle and that DPS to get the most value. Now there's two ways to build Sparkle, a slow Sparkle and a fast Sparkle. Both have its strengths and weaknesses, but it really depends on who you're supporting. The fast Sparkle build is to get as much speed as humanly possible. She brings any other unit up to her speed as long as they're slower, but not slower than half her speed. This style of Sparkle prioritizes building speed over even crit damage, because essentially there's no cap in how fast she can go. This style of Sparkle benefits DPSs that are naturally slow and can benefit a lot from skipping out building speed. But some DPSs are so naturally fast, like Zila, it's highly likely the majority of Sparkle's action events will be wasted if you used a fast sparkle. This is where I would recommend you to build a slow sparkle. A slow sparkle doesn't need to be sluggishly slow, I still recommend 134 plus. It just means she goes after the DPS to maximize the action advance usage. This is very akin to how Bronya is best used, but instead of giving one extra action per turn, sparkle gives half. This is not to be underestimated, because a DPS going from 2 actions to 3 in a cycle is still very strong. Rotation for a slow sparkle will look like this. DPS goes, then sparkle goes, advance their next action by half, then DPS goes again, and finally sparkle advances the other half. 
Now the DPS fully gained one extra action while having the huge crit damage buff for two of the three turns. After you have determined what DPS Sparkle is supporting, you'll have a better idea how much speed to aim for when building Sparkle. It's important to figure this out first because it is more important than having good relics and set bonuses. If it's more important to you to run Sparkle in any team rather than min-maxing a specific team, then it's safer to just build a fast Sparkle and have as much speed as possible. For main stats, chest, you always want crit damage because she transfers 24% of her crit damage to your DPS and that's very valuable. Sparkle doesn't have high base speed or any traces to help her, speed boots will be very important. Even for a slow Sparkle, I still recommend getting 134 plus for MOC as long as your DPS is slightly faster than Sparkle. For Sphere, ideally you want tank, main stats, HP or defense. But she is pretty tanky as is, especially when played in a mono quantum team with Fushuan. You're not going to die anyway. What's more important here is to get crit damage and speed substats and tune your speed right. For rope, always go with energy regeneration. This is the best way to achieve a 3 turn ultimate. And that's all you need. There's no need to build more energy from other sources. Now for substats. You'll be mainly looking for speed for a fast sparkle and crit damage for a slow sparkle. But in every case, you want both. And you also want some effect resist as well, so you don't get crowd controlled so much to have your turns get messed up. It is very important for a speed tuned team to resist crowd control. For relic set bonuses, the outer pieces don't really make a huge impact. It's a good chance for you to save stamina and just mix and match whatever you have. Keep in mind, getting good main stats and substats are the most important thing here. For a fast sparkle, 4P's wind set and messenger set do offer a little value, but it's not recommended for a slow sparkle because it might change your turn order and mess up your game plan. The planner ornaments are way more impactful. They offer more buffs to your teams. Although you can go with any of these three, but broken keel is just slightly better. Fleet of the Ageless is good, Panacone is good for Mono Quantum Team. Now let's talk about light cones. I'll start off by saying her signature light cone is the best in slot, but the best thing about it is that it makes building Sparkle a lot easier and it gives your team a lot of crit value and lessens the burden of farming good relics. But in fully invested teams with high crit value relics, this light cone loses out on that advantage and is only 7-8% to ahead of other light cones that I'll be going over. I'll talk about her best alternative light cones, which are way more obtainable, and if you have them at high superimpositions, consider them if they actually match your team's strategy. First, we have the Bronya light cone and the MOC shop light cone, that are essentially the same thing offering damage increase for the DPS going after Sparkle. These light cones are really good for a fast Sparkle build, because the DPS always goes after Sparkle, being brought up to her speed. But you have to watch out for slow Sparkle build. It adds another layer of complexity to speed tuning. You have to make sure Sparkle is the slowest unit on the team, or else the buff will be wasted 50% of the time. Also, these light cones only buff for one turn, so it will not work with characters that rely on follow-up attacks. Then we have the Planetary Rendezvous, which is the best light cone if you're always set on playing mono quantum teams. But if not, this light cone doesn't do anything, because Sparkle doesn't do damage. Then we have Dance Dance Dance. This light cone is so good at faster cycle clears in the hands of a skilled player. But if you're unsure about how to best utilize and abuse these action values, or if you're mainly doing autoplay, it's just best to stay away from this altogether. If not utilized correctly, it offers little value and can even mess you up in terms of speed tuning. And finally, we have a few light cones that are unconditional, but also a little less powerful. Use them if you don't like conditional light cones or if you lack good options. Model Quantum is finally complete with Sparkle being the first Harmony Quantum unit. If you play her in a Mono Quantum team, she further buffs your attack by 30%. The two Quantum DPSs we have now is Qingque and Sila. Both have superb potential with Sparkle. 
Qingchue is best paired with a fast sparkle. You can skip building speed on Qingchue altogether and build as much speed as possible on Sparkle to bring Qingchue up to her speed. But if your main DPS is Zilla, you're better off playing a slow Sparkle. Zilla is so fast at baseline with a 115 base speed and 25% from her skill, it means without any other sources, she's already sitting at 144. Sparkle can offer way more value by going after Zilla to get the most out of that 50% action advance. Now, outside of mono quantum teams, Sparkle can still be the ideal hyper carry support for DPSs with these two qualities. First, they like to spend a lot of skill points, the more the merrier. Two, they get heavily rewarded by not building speed and purely focusing on attack. A few examples of such hyper carries are Imbiber Lune, Jingyuan, Argenti, Himiko, and so on. DPS characters with follow-up attacks are definitely not excluded because Sparkle's buff lasts longer than the typical one-turn buffs. Now, hyper carries like Jing Liu or Blade specifically have no problem being paired up with Sparkle per se, but keep in mind, their biggest strength is to be skill point conservative. In such a scenario, Sparkle at E0 will be overshadowed by a Branya at E1S1. Sparkle is not restrictive at all when it comes to team building, but the one thing I will say is that DOT teams are not going to want her. DOT teams usually have more than one carry, and DOT doesn't even benefit from crit damage. Due to the similarities between Sparkle and Branya in the hyper carry role, it's inevitable that they will be compared with each other. Sparkle has bigger buffs, more universal usage with less skill points, and her less restrictive buff compatibility with follow up attacks. But Bronya offers a simply more reliable action events. It's actually not even just twice as good as a 50% events, it's better. It actually makes the unit act immediately along with dispelling one debuff. This is super reliable because if your DPS gets pushed back or imprisoned beyond the 100% action value, they will always be brought up to speed to Bronya. But in the current meta, we're not seeing this much crowd control, so if enemies do become more annoying, do realize Branya will be more resilient in such an environment. I believe Sparkle's signature light cone is skippable because if you knew what teams you'll be playing her on and form a strategy around, you'll have very good 4-star options that are competitive. So if you wanted to invest a little more into Sparkle, I highly recommend going for her first or second Eidolon over the signature light cone instead. Her first Eidolon goes hard, it extends her ultimate's improved damage increase for another turn which is just okay, but buffing everyone's attack by 40% is just huge. This Eidolon is so over budgeted, equivalent to twice the amount of support's Eidolons. Crit damage is usually the premium stat, but with Sparkle already buffing this already, attack percent actually catches up and will be just as impactful. Her second Eidolon is a permanent 24% defense shred to all allies. Defense Shred is absolutely insane and almost a 1 to 1 increase to your damage assuming you're stacking Defense Shred. Teams that already do stack this will benefit the most from this Eidolon. One example is Mono Quantum Team with Silver Wolf. Sparkle's Eidolon 3, 4, and 5 are nothing to write home about. They're all stepping stones to her E6, which further buffs your crit damage. And then it extends to the whole team instead of one ally. This Eidolon is not as impressive as E1 and E2 in a hyper carry team, but it does expand her role into buffing more than one DPS. In my opinion, E6 is overkill as crit damage is experiencing diminishing returns at this point, but Sparkle's E1 and E2 are both really good stopping points if you wanted to invest a little more. All in all, she's perfectly legit at E0. With the existence of Branya, they really had to step up and make Sparkle great. So even without her signature light cone or Eidolons, Sparkle will be less restrictive and bring up many hyper carries that's been sitting on the sidelines waiting for their version of Branya. Alright, and that concludes my complete guide to Sparkle. Good luck with your polls and dealing with her toxicity. My name is Gladius, thank you for watching, until next time.